All right, welcome to Monday's Insta Clubhouse session. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our Mental Health Mondays for the month of May because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. We're going to be talking about depression and anxiety. Um, as always, we're going to get started with our ropes. So give me one second to present that screen so you can see our ropes and we'll review those together. All right, so when we look at our ropes, we start off with our um, respect. Please be respectful to everyone in this conversation. Everyone's voice is important and be, everyone is treated as equals. Uh, moving on to responsibility. Please be res remember that you are responsible for your actions and held accountable for your actions in this discussion. Um, all sessions are recorded. Um, that's for the safety of all the participants and so we can share it out with other teams that weren't able to make the session today. Moving down to O, we have open-minded. This is a public space. Everyone's coming from different backgrounds, different experiences. Be open to hearing new ideas and look at it as an opportunity to learn. Um, moving on to opportunity. Uh, thank you for taking advantage of this opportunity to share and connect with other people. Um, next is P, please be patient um, in this virtual space. There might be technical issues or delays. Just be patient with us as we're working through that. Um, Next P is participation. Uh, we do encourage participation. It's supposed to be an interactive experience, but we do respect the fact that you do have the right to pass if you do not want to discuss a certain topic. Moving on to E, we do expect for you to put forth some, some type of effort. You don't have to necessarily share everything that we do, but we do ask that you at least try the activities on your own. Um, we ask that you're engaged. We ask that you find maybe a quiet place to get away from any distractions so you can be focused on the conversation that we're having here. Um, we do plan to learn and share different things, but we do also want this to be an enjoyable experience. So definitely getting your feedback and letting, letting us know what we can do to make the experience better for you. Definitely let us know. And then lastly, our S's. Um, Please give space for people to talk in online conversations. It's a good idea to maybe give a few seconds to allow a person to finish their thought. And lastly, this is a safe space. Uh, any bullying, disrespect, or inappropriate behaviors will not be tolerated. Again, all sessions are recorded for the safety of all participants. So we'll close that. And oh, good, I'm not presenting anyone. Um, so, Casey, how are we doing today? How are you feeling? Um, good. I had a um, virtual like interview today, and I got hired on the spot. Oh, that's awesome. Where are you going to be working at? Kennywood. Oh, that's all. That's great. That's really cool. So all that career work, work like practices worked out for you? Yeah, it was like virtual, so it was like so much better. That's cool. Do you know what you'll be doing there? Well, it's something like I'll be doing rides, but I don't know which one. Okay. Um. So, like, attention that you, you know, it's Kennywood. Did they give you any, like, information on, like, what their plans are for the summer with, you know, are they going to be open and all kind of stuff like that? Well, they said we're in yellow or whatever. I guess mm -hmm. that's just the flow. So, they don't know when they're going to open because it has to be green. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see kind of what Kennywood's going to be like after all this, you know, in terms of how they're going to manage things. It's going to be like, you know, they limit the number of people that can come every day or like, are they sanitizing all the rides every time someone gets off? I don't know, but that's really, that's great. I'm glad you, that's awesome. And you seem, you seem excited. Was it, is it like your number one choice to work there? Um, well, I was just applying to these things cause I made a resume with my youth co my youth coach and my mm -hmm. sister Desiree, yeah. she um got hired and her friend. So I was like, I'm just going to do it, too. And they hired me on the spot. That's great. And then it's also cool that your sister and her friend work there. So, like, you're not just working with, like, complete strangers. You guys can kind of schedule together and things like that. That's awesome. Um, so I take you're doing pretty well today. That's a positive. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing good myself. It's a little dreary out. Um, but, yeah, you know, overall, things are pretty good. Um, the question I have, like that I always do at the beginning is, can you share one happy memory from your past? So like maybe some, like an event or something that 
happened or, you know, something that's a really happy memory for you? Um, whenever I got to come back with my mom. Okay. That's a big one. Definitely. Um, how long have you been with your mom? Um, I don't really remember the time when I came back, but I know it's been since 2019, like the end of 2019. That's awesome. Um, I would say my positive would be, I guess, there's Devon. I'll let him in. Uh, my positive memory would probably be the day I got married. I mean, that's pretty much started everything for me. What's up, Devon? What's up? How are you? I'm good. Um, you're perfect timing. We're just doing check-ins. So how you doing today? I'm doing good. Just uh, chilling right now uh, on my day off. My, uh, you got a day off today. First day off. Uh, I got one day off at, uh, this week. I actually have two day off. So I have today off and then I have Thursday off. Okay. Three to three day week. That's good. That's positive. Um, Devon, we also have like our like daily question and we're asking uh, everyone to share one happy memory. So like thinking back, what's one of the happiest times in your life? Ooh, you asking me right now or? Yeah, just like it could be when you were five years old. It could have been last week. Like just a memory that you have is really happy and positive for you. Good happy. Um, probably my brother's wedding. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. When? How long ago was that? It was actually in 2017. It was like, I mean, it was, it was extremely fun. <laughs> that's awesome. It's funny because right when you got on, I was sharing my happy memory and I said it was my when I got married, like my wedding, which was hold on one second. I think it's I don't know. My I was married in 2018. It's not good that I had to like double check, but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely a very happy time. It's interesting, all three of us mentioned happy memories that involved family. You know, Greek being around our family does bring us some of the most joy. Um, so Devon, I was telling Casey today's topic, um, every Monday during the month of May, we're doing mental health Mondays, uh, because mo uh, May is uh, national mental health awareness month. So last Monday we had a conversation about, you know, what is a mental, what is mental health? What is a mental health disorder today? We're going to be looking at depression and anxiety as mental health disorders. So we're going to be kind of talking about how do we identify these in people and ourselves and then also kind of how we can prevent these things from happening. Okay, just wanted to get that out there for everyone. So when I say depression and anxiety, well, let's start with depression as a mental health disorder. What do you think that means? For People are sad. Someone who's sad, definitely. Devon, do you want to add anything? You're not, yeah, I guess you're not getting what you want, maybe. Okay. So not people that are, are sad or not satisfied or they they need, they're lacking something. Okay. Um, Casey, I'm glad that you said, you know, feeling sad, because that is like the definition of being depressed. But when it becomes a mental health disorder, it's when it goes to the point that's impacting the way that person like functions and feels and lives their life. Because we all we are, we're all we all feel sad at some point in life. The question is, how does it shift into actually being a problem or a disorder? Typically, like I said before, it impacts their functioning. So how they're able to go throughout their day, like if they're not able to go to school or they have issues with, like relationship issues with their friends and family. And it's also the duration. So how long does it last? Like, yeah, if someone in your family passed away, you would be sad. The question is, are you sad for like a month and you can't do anything? Or is it like, I'm sad, I do go through the grieving process and I eventually get to the point that I can get back to normal. Um, typically from a mental health standpoint, if that sadness or depression lasts longer than two weeks, um, it, it might be a good idea to kind of contact someone and kind of talk about it a little bit more because it's lasting much longer than it should be. Does that make sense everyone? Mm -hmm. huh. um, and so when we say anxiety, what do you think we mean by that in terms of anxiety disorders? We lost Devon. He'll be back. 
What do you think, Casey? Um, like worrying. Definitely worry, uh, maybe nervousness, that kind of thing. And it's the same thing as depression. Like we all feel anxious. Like if you have to give a speech, you're going to feel nervous or worried and things like that. But it's when it lasts an extended period of time or it causes an impact to your functioning. OK. Um, so what I want to do with you is kind of just get an idea from you of what you already know and then also educate you on some things. So when we talk about identifying a mental health issue like depression or anxiety, the first thing we think about is what are the signs and symptoms? OK. So when I say signs and symptoms, what do you think a what do you think a sign is? Like if you like, what is that? Like a sign of a symptom, like a sign of I don't know how to define it. So and divine, we're talking about now how do we identify mental health issues? And the way to do that is by identifying the sign or the symptom. So when I say the word sign. What do you think I mean by that? What is a sign? People's facial expressions, maybe? Yes, we're gonna get into that. So a sign are the things that we can see, they're observable. So like something I can look at that person and see something going on with them that would be concerning. So if a sign is something we see, a symptom would be, Okay. Um, so a symptom would be things that the person is experiencing. So something that's going on internally. So like I could look at someone and say, you know, they have a frown on their face, so they're sad. But I can't necessarily know for sure that they're feeling sad unless they tell me. And that's what they're feeling internally. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm hmm. So again, the symptom is something they'd have to share with us. A sign is something that we can see. So almost thinking about signs are like the external things and symptoms are the intern. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So when we talk about depression and anxiety, um, when I first started talking about mental health, I mentioned that it impacts the areas of our lives. So like our physical or our bodies are impacted by it our feelings and our mental state are affected by it and our relationships are impacted by it. So when I say like someone is going through depression, how do you think their body is changing or how they would act physically? So what would you, what would you th some of the signs that you might see of someone who's depressed? How could you tell? Like if you knew them for a while, um, you'll know their facial, you know, you know how they act. Um, and then, Boom! One day something hits you, and like, 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 what happened to this person? Like, this is not the person I knew a couple of years ago. You know, so changes in behavior definitely. You can tell by their facial expressions. What about their like body? Like, how would they like look in terms of like maybe how their body feels or? how like they might be carrying themselves, what might you notice physically going on with them? What do you think? Well, think about this. When you guys are sad or depressed, how does your body feel? How do you, you know, carry yourself when you're sad? Like, what do you notice that people do when they're sad? They cry. Cry, definitely. What else? No, I'm going to a they just don't look the same. Okay, so uh, their appearance might change. Yeah. Huh? Or act the same. Okay, so again, that change in behaviors. And when you say they don't act the same, what do you mean by that? Like, how are they acting differently? Or well, some of the things that you see with your friends when they're sad that, they, that you notice is something like different. What do you think? They're not as happy as they were before or they they're hanging around the wrong crowd okay. or they're friends that that I know that they used to be best friends but now they're losing those friends and the way they talk I don't know it's just something in the person that I mean like you just have to be friends with them to know you know who they are yeah 
This is all good. Um, going back to the way they talk, what do you when someone's sad, what kind of language do they kind of use? How do they talk? Like, what do you think their tone is like? I mean, like, if they um say this person talks like educational, and then a year later, um, you haven't seen them in a while, now they talk like they're from the ghetto. <laughs> Gotcha. So, um, like, they're from out of jail. Like they just got from a prison. And they're talking like, "Hey, man, like, what's up?" And they're not talking educational like you used to know. Huh? And you're like, oh, "Okay, I know that they, they must be hanging around somebody that you know they probably shouldn't be hanging around with." I could see that. Now, my other question would be: when we talk about depression. And we talk about like mental and emotional. So unhappy is one feeling. What are some of the feelings that we associate with depression? What are we thinking there? So basically, what are some other ways you could say the word depressed? So Casey said sad earlier. What's another one? I'm just going through bad times. You can use some words like that. Definitely. So one thing, um, when they talk, they're more negative. They have more negative talk. Like they're always thinking about like the worst case scenario rather than looking on the brighter side. Um, Casey, I like that you mentioned emotional. So like they might have like highs and lows in their emotions. Yeah, I could see that. Anything else when we think about like how their brain functions or how their emotions are acting when they're depressed, when they're feeling down. What do you think? Um, that's a pretty good start. We'll come back to that. So we have that for um, depressed. What about um, anxiety? So if someone's going through an anxiety disorder, what do you think they their body how their body might respond in that moment? So think about when you're anxious, what happens to your body? So when you're nervous or worried, well, my sister's having that. When your sister has it, okay. So when she's having when she's struggling yeah. with that, what happens to her? What have you noticed about her when she's struggling through oh, her anxiety? She like, all she does is, like, worry about just a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Like, we'll be talking about something just normal, and she'll mm -hmm. think of, like, other stuff and, like, what's happened or whatever. And I'm just like, that's not going to happen. What are you talking about? Definitely. It's, like, it's, um, but, like, she gets excessive worrying or worrying about things that are beyond your control. Um, so that's it's definitely a, that's a major sign of it. Um, what else have you noticed, Casey? I would even add, Casey, do you think, does she ever struggle to, like, concentrate or, like, focus on things because she's always thinking about, like, worrying? Um, I don't know. I don't really talk about, like, stuff. I don't really talk about anxiety to her. Just mm -hmm. because I don't really want to think about stuff like that. And then she's going to start thinking about some crazy stuff. And I just, mm -mm, I don't know how to deal with that. Well, that's the only reason we're having this conversation. I'm not telling you have to go be her therapist, but also talking about trying to get a better understanding of what she's going through. So you can kind of help support her when you, where you can. But I think one thing that she mentioned without even trying was sometimes they shut themselves off to other people. Like they isolate themselves because they don't want to either deal with the pressures or added anxiety of social interaction. So like isolation might be something that we see. I guess you can say I'm, I'm a good uh, example for de depression because I went through depression. Okay. I, I, hey. I recently went to Texas and uh, see my mom and it didn't work out too well. It, it left me at a very sad stage in my life Definitely you know cool. physically walking through the desert just nowhere to go i mean 
all I could do is just trust with God. That, that's all I can do. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, Yvonne, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, <laughs> that's a tough time to go through. Like that feeling of loss or feeling alone or feeling like kind of no direction. And it's impressive that, you know, you were able to, you know, find your strength and your strength came through religion, but finding that, and we're going to talk about that a little in a minute, is kind of what helps someone in that scenario, what they can do to pull themselves out of it. So I appreciate you sharing that, Devon. Um, real quick with anxiety, like some of the physical signs of it would be like, would be like sweating, um, like butterflies in the stomach. Sometimes, like the person can't sit still, or they're, like they're restless, or like they tap their foot, or stuff like that. Um, with the mental piece, there is the concentration issues. There is, um, there's, I mean, there's a ton of stuff. Uh, the social uh, piece would be the isolation, or possibly even. Um, getting into arguments or like avoiding people. Um, hold on one second. The reason I'm bringing these up are because these are the kind of things that if you notice the stuff happening in a friend, a family member, or anything like that, it might be a good idea to have a conversation with them to let them know that you're noticing it because those are the things that um, they can, that will lead to a mental health disorder. Like if those things go un, un, um, unaddressed, that that can cause problems down the road. Casey, you mentioned, you know, you don't want to have that conversation with your sister. And I'm not saying you have to, but a lot of times people who go through a mental health issue, they want to talk about it, but they're almost afraid to, because they're afraid of the response that they're going to get. You know what I mean? Like they, a lot of people say, like, oh, I don't want to, you know, add to their burden or anything like that. But it's a lot of times it's actually helpful for them to have someone to talk with or talk to about. So it's just something to think about. Again, I'm not saying you have to go and talk with her about it if you're not comfortable doing that. I think you're already being supportive just by being her sister. But keep in mind, like, she might want to talk to you and don't hesitate if you feel like, you know, I want to reach out. Um, so. Again, these are just, I'm going to quickly go over, if I can pull it up here. When we talk about the physical signs and symptoms, um, I'm going to read off a couple that are literally from like a mental health journal. So these are the things that you want to look out for in terms of signs and symptoms of someone going through anxiety and depression. So physically, um, there might be issues with like their heart pounding. So heart issues, chest pains, things like that. So think about when you're nervous, your blood starts rushing, you know, your, your pulse goes up, things like that. Um, they might have issues with breathing. So like fast breathing, shortness of breath, things like that. Um, they could even get headaches or dizziness due to um, their anxiety or their depression. Uh, we mentioned being sick to their stomach, the butterflies in their stomach. Um, some people get so anxious that it develops into like aches and pains. Have you ever heard someone say like, oh, when I'm stressful, my shoulders get tight or something like that. Like your body physically responds to the mental things that are going on. Um, then, uh, Devon, you mentioned like their appearance changes. A lot of times when someone's going through depression, they might, you know, not try as hard to take care of themselves. So you might see a dip in their clothing, their hygiene, there might be weight loss or weight gain. There'll be a change in their appearance. Um, some of their behaviors will change when we look at, you know, their eating habits or sleeping. These are all things like if you notice that all of a sudden this person's not sleeping anymore, like they're staying up really late at night and maybe getting like one or two hours of sleep or the person's sleeping all the time, like they're oversleeping, like they're not getting out of bed. Um, also, there's hormonal changes that come along with these mental health disorders. For women, they can, can all have an impact on their menstrual cycle. Um, for everyone, it could also impact their sexual desire, desire so their sex drive might go down. And then lastly, looking at the mental and the social piece, um, Casey, you mentioned they're more emotional. So mood swings um, would be definitely a factor. Um, there could be some anger and irritability because they're frustrated with the situation that they're in and that can come off as anger. Um, what about hormones? 
Because you mentioned sexual desire, like hormones and all that. Yeah, that so like, mm -hmm. so like their hormones will change. Like their body chemistry can be thrown off due to the mental issues that are going on. So the anger could be related to that as well. Um, they could have feelings of hopelessness or helplessness um, and low self-esteem when we talk about their mental state. Um, usually with the emotions, those are going to be symptoms. So the person would have to share with you that they're feeling this. The behaviors or the social piece are things that we can see. So Casey, you mentioned the crying, possibly withdrawing from others. They're not able to handle all their responsibilities. The things that are going on in their life seems a little bit overwhelming. Um, they might be have a loss of motivation. So they're not, like um, Devon said, they're not doing their same things that they used to. They could have been like a straight A student, very into school and tried very hard. And then you notice all of a sudden they're not putting forth that effort anymore. Um, some behaviors we do see are substance use, so using drugs and alcohol to try to cope with what they're dealing with, um, avoidance or um, isolation or another sign. Again, these are the things that we're looking out for when someone's going through this. So if we start to see more and more of these signs and symptoms developing, we might say, OK, we need to look out for this person. We need to step in. We need to try to do something to help them out. OK. Um, Moving forward, if we did see something like this, if we were concerned about a friend of ours, what might we do? What are some of the things that you um, could offer or places or resources to get some teen help? What do you think? Or a former friend. <laughs> or a former friend, yeah. Can you guys think of any places that you could turn um, to get that person some support or some help? I mean, you can show them your emotional support system. Definitely. That's a, that's a huge step right there, Casey, is kind of offering your help and offering to be, you know, there for them can be hugely reassuring. I definitely would agree with that. Um, I think that's, that's like the first step, definitely, is like saying like they're not alone, like you're with them, you're going to help them through this. I would agree. Anything, anywhere else we think we might be able to get them some help? I, I I have some things to share, but I want you guys kind of brainstorm. Go ahead, Devon. Maybe talk to their job, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, depending on what they're doing, um, their supervisor or boss uh, might be able to help out with that. I know it's kind of tough for teens because they're usually part-time workers, but most jobs do have some form of like employee assistance where they can get them services and help and things like that. Um, most jobs do, do provide that. That's true. Any other places or people that you might try to connect this person with to get them some help? So I know one is, um, I know school's out right now, but the guidance counselors at your school, like they're, they're trained, most of them are trained therapists. And if they're not a therapist themselves, they have access to a therapist. So like, if you were concerned about a friend, that might be the first step that you go to is one, like Casey said, talking with them, trying to be there for them, but then also saying, you know, it might be a good idea to connect with this counselor. Um, the other per, per people that you might want to think about is the, the, the teenager's parent and asking them, you know, can we talk to your parents about this, bring them into the conversation? Because if you're going to, you know, connect them with a therapist or anything like that, more than likely the parent is going to need to be involved because then you have insurance and all kind of stuff like that. They need to go through that process. Um, I what do if they, they said so already Say it again. What if they already know? The parent? Mm-hmm. Okay. If the parent already knows and they're, they're not like making it, they're just hiding it from them, and it, then the the kid won't listen to them. Okay. Um, now I will say this: the nice thing about teenagers in the state of Pennsylvania is that if the teenager is over the age of fourteen, they can get their own mental health treatment and services without the parent's consent. So, like, if, if we're working with, like, a fifth grader, the parent has to sign off for that therapy. 
if it's a 14 or older individual, that 14 year old can pursue treatment or mental health services without the consent of the parent. So that would be another step. If the parents aren't recognizing or taking it seriously, it might be something where you're contacting the school or the guidance counselor or school social worker and asking them to pursue trying to get that young person support. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is, and you'll see it on our website, um, I'm gonna be putting up resources of where teens in the greater Pittsburgh area can go for mental health support um, that is you know, either at a very minimal cost or possibly even free. Um, because I think Devon, you make a really good point. Sometimes parents, either aren't don't take it seriously or the parent might be the source of some of these issues for the kid. And that leads to them, you know, not wanting to get that kid the help that they need. Um, we talked about before, you know, the stigma that comes with mental health. A lot of parents don't want their kid to go through mental health or admit that it's a problem for them because they're afraid of the stigma that comes along with that. Awesome. All right. So we're going to shift away from our lecture piece and we're going to shift into the community discussion. Um, so I'm going to turn off the live stream and the recording and then I'll start recording again and we'll start talking about risk and protective factors. So give me one second to shift over.